In this video we shall learn about solidification shrinkage. Solidification shrinkage. Metals are less dense as a liquid than a solid, so during solidification the metal density dramatically increases results in solidification shrinkage. General characteristics. Generally very irregular and have rough, dendritic morphology. Found in interiors, in the thickness changing portion of part. In the inside of extra large zones. Sometimes in the form of a surface depression in varying sizes. Stages in solidification shrinkage There are three distinct stages of shrinkage as molten metal alloys solidify. Liquid shrinkage. Liquid to solid shrinkage. Solid shrinkage. Liquid shrinkage. Liquid shrinkage occurs as it cools from liquid to solid at solidification temperature. While important to metal casters, it is not an important design consideration. Liquid to solid shrinkage. Liquid to solid shrinkage is the shrinkage of the metal as it goes from the liquid's disconnected atoms and molecules to the formation of crystals of atoms and chemical compounds, the building blocks of solid metal. Liquid to solid shrinkage. Liquid to solid shrinkage is an extremely important consideration for the design engineer. Solid shrinkage. Solid shrinkage occurs after the metal has completely solidified and is cooling to ambient temperature. Solid shrinkage changes the dimension of the casting from those in the mold to those dictated by the rate of solid shrinkage for the alloy. Types of shrinkage Cavity shrinkage Spongy shrinkage Filamentary shrinkage Dendritic shrinkage Cavity shrinkage This defect occurs when two different sources of molten material are joined to create a common front while solidification is already taking place. A lack of additional feed material to fill in the accumulating gaps can further exacerbate the cavity shrinkage problem. Spongy shrinkage. This usually arises in the thicker midsection of the casting product and causes a thin lattice texture similar to filament or dendrites to develop. Filamentary shrinkage. This results in a network of continuous cracks of various dimensions and densities, usually under a thick section of the material. It can be difficult to detect, and the fracture lines tend to be interconnected. Dendritic shrinkage Dendritic shrinkage are narrow, randomly distributed lines or cavities that are often unconnected. They are typically thinner and less dense than filamentary shrinkage. Causes of shrinkage Unsuitably designed part to be cast, as well as inadequate casting methods. The feeding difficulties such as diameter and or incorrect design of the risers, use of thin sectioned metal entry points. High casting temperatures or excessively low temperatures. Metal contraction or expansion tendency, the lower the metal's tendency to contract or expand, the lower the risk. Preventions Use of optimal feeding system Use of chill for directional solidification Use of exothermic feeder sleeve Decrease of the pouring temperature Solidification shrinkage allowances Factors affecting shrinkage Pouring temperature Gating system Carbon achelant factor Mold temperature Pouring speed Pouring temperature To reduce the potential for metal casting shrinkage it is helpful to work within a predefined temperature range. Metal should be heated to achieve appropriate molten characteristics, but without reaching its full liquid state. 
This usually entails heating the material to slightly above its flow point, but well below its melting point. Preventing overheating can be just as important to effective casting as cultivating a molten flow. It is also useful to note that castings can cool at a rate of up to 100 degrees per minute once molten pouring is complete. Since shrinkage can be caused by working material while solidification is underway, it is important to have equipment prepared to treat the workpiece before it solidifies. Sprue Design The most common causes of shrinkage are related to the casting sprue, which is the passage through which molten metal is poured into a mold. In some areas, such as the heavy sections of the mold, the metal takes longer to contract and solidify, which reduces feed material availability and increases the likelihood of shrinkage especially if the sprue is too small for the volume of flow. A properly sized sprue attached directly to the heavy suction can fill the cavity and provide the feed material necessary to counteract shrinkage as cooling occurs. In addition, using a rounded, rather than a flat or square, gate on the sprue can further reduce the risk of forming defects. Using a narrow or tapered sprue can result in the molten metal being sprayed rather than poured into the cavity. When this happens, certain sections of the workpiece begin to solidify before the entire mold is filled. Molten flow into the cavity should be as uniform as possible, and a larger central sprue or a multiple sprue arrangement can help achieve the even supply of material. Gating System Risers, also known as feeders, are the most common way of providing directional solidification. It supplies liquid metal to the solidifying casting to compensate for solidification shrinkage. For a riser to work properly the riser must solidify after the casting, otherwise it cannot supply liquid metal to shrinkage within the casting. Chill for directional solidification. A chill is an object used to promote solidification in a specific portion of a metal casting mold. Normally the metal in the mold cools at a certain rate relative to thickness of the casting. When the geometry of the molding cavity prevents directional solidification from occurring naturally, a chill can be strategically placed to help promote it. There are two types of chills internal and external chills. Exothermic Sleeve Exothermic Sleeve facilitates effective feeding of metal and extending the solidification time of risers used on castings. The design of exothermic sleeves initiate exothermic reaction in the riser which liberates heat. Heat in the riser is conserved over an extended period as the insulating sleeves provide an efficient thermal insulating layer. Due to extended period, Metal in risers remain molten till the end of casting solidification and risers keep feeding casting and prevent shrinkage. Gating System Carbon Equivalent Factor Carbon equivalent is the combined effect of carbon silicon and phosphorus. It can be calculated as 3 plus P2. Carbon equivalent affects inversely the shrinkage rate. Greater the carbon equivalent lower will be the shrinkage rate. Maximum carbon equivalent used in case of cast iron is 4.6%. Thank you.